All right, friends, welcome into our Know Before You Go for our Portland conference. Campus Home Live is the name of it this year. We're so excited for you to join us. I'm Spencer Giese from the Home Office, He Series Pronouns, Educational Program Manager at AKUI. Thanks for joining us. Uh, we are going to Portland, Oregon later this month, and we can't wait to see you there. Uh, we've got some esteemed guests with us today to talk about a variety of pieces of the conference. Thrilled to have you here from them a bit later. For now, I want to just give you an overview of the conference. Um, we're going to talk about how to get there, where it's located in the city, what the convention center looks like, uh, uh, what you can expect from featured speakers and featured sessions, some conference highlights, and a little bit more about connecting at the conference. So um, just by the numbers, right now, as of five minutes ago, uh, we are up to 863 delegates who have registered to attend the conference. We've also got 134 exhibitors joining us, which is outstanding. We've got so many of our leaders in the field giving back to the conference by presenting. Over 400 presenters at this conference. We've got major receptions. We've got sponsors. We've got general sessions. Can't wait to have you join us. Uh, first, we're going to talk about transportation. You're going to you're going to get to Portland somehow. And a couple updates for you. There's three conference hotels. If you've not registered for one of those yet, I would encourage you to do that really soon. Uh, everyone coming to the conference is going to receive a max light rail pass for the duration of the conference. One note, you will need to use the max rail from the airport to get to your hotel or the convention center. Once you're at the convention center and you check in for the conference, that's where we will give you that max light rail pass to use for the rest of your time in Portland. Um, so. As a heads up, we just need to get you to the convention center. Once you're there, we will ha we will happily give you that light rail pass. So you can see on a map all the important pieces. Yes, Dutch Brothers Coffee, that is the important, I'm sorry, the convention center is the important piece. Um, and then you can see our three conference hotels and where they're located. Uh, these are all within, within easy traversable distances or light rail and easy traversable distances to get to the convention center. And then once you're at the convention center, we're gonna use the ML King Jr. entrance to come in. That's gonna be easiest entrance uh, to join us at the convention center. Here we are, this is level two. And I'll see on level two, the purple box right here, the Oregon ballroom, that is, we're going to find our general sessions and our opening reception. So we've got four general sessions that all be held here. We also have a delegate workspace and a delegate networking space in the Portland ballroom. Um, this is also a great space if you have an informal gathering. Maybe it is a region, maybe it is a network, maybe it is something that you want to get together. You contact some of your friends and you say, hey, meet me at the Portland ballroom. Tons of space there to meet and connect. Down on level one, you're going to find uh, a number of key ingredients that will make it a lot easier for you. You're going to find our pre our programming space. Or first of all, we've got our exhibit hall space here in the purple. We've got our pre-function C space. This is where registration is, uh, the engagement center, the foundation, bookstore, our local arrangements setup. And then our program educational program rooms are in these three sections, lobby A, lobby B, and lobby C. So all of this very close together. If you've been to other conferences, it might've been a long walk between spaces. This is all right there at your fingertips. Uh, at registration, again, that's at level one of the convention center. Uh, you'll also be able to see on one side, once you're at registration, on one side, you're gonna find the program rooms. The other side, you'll find the exhibit hall space and our local arrangements table is right there next to registration for all of your Portland questions you want to have answered on the spot. Uh, we'll go through some of our featured speakers on on our uh, opening session. We'll have April Rinney. On our general session on Wednesday, we'll have Dr. Robin Holmes Sullivan. And then on Thursday at our closing session, we'll have our sprint speakers brought to you by our very own a QOI Campus Home Live Program Committee. So thanks to our program committee for all their hard work to put together the Sprint Speaker Slate for this year. 
And don't forget, you'll have an opportunity to meet Cedar the Don't Drama Llama. More information on that later. That's called a tease. So um, if you've not already, we highly recommend that you download the Akuai Events app in the mobile store of your phone's choosing. Um, just type in Akuai Events. Once you're there, you'll be able to log in with your Akuai credentials and get connected with the Canvas Home Live schedule. That's going to give you your whole schedule of the conference, and you're able to create my schedule there to select pre-select programs you want to go to. So you can remind yourself, I really liked that description. I would like to go to that. Now I'm going to pass it to over to one of our, our first guests, Melissa McDonald, to talk about her program slate. So Melissa, take it away. Hey, everyone. I'm uh, Melissa McDonald. I am the uh, program committee chair for this year's conference. Um, I'm excited to be here today and excited to see many of you in a little less than two weeks now. Um, so a couple things to highlight here. Uh, there are, we are offering this year 12 pre-conference sessions. You can see what all those sessions are listed on the website. If you haven't checked those out yet, I encourage you to uh, do so. They're uh, either AM or PM sessions, a little bit longer than our typical uh, general sessions. And um, they are a great opportunity to really go in depth on a topic. You can still sign up for those. So I encourage you to do that. Um, the, we also have our four general sessions, um, and so those will be offered throughout the conference. Spencer has uh, indicated the speakers for some of those. I'll highlight there that one of those is that sprint uh, closing session. We really encourage you, if you uh, don't have to head home, to come out for that session. It's really a great time. Uh, our six speakers do one of those 20 slides and uh, 20 seconds per slide uh, where they really print, uh, present on some very interesting topics, and so I encourage you to come out and check those out. Um, we also have uh, the um, nine educational sessions throughout the conference that make up a little over 180 uh, programs total. Uh, you can look at those in the app, as Spencer already mentioned. Please do check those out and put together your program schedule. I'll highlight for you there that we do have our career connection sessions during session eight. Um, there are both career connection sessions and regular conference sessions during that time. The career connections I want to highlight because they're really a great um, time if you want to connect with individuals who are at the same position level as you are, uh, same uh, maybe doing the same work function. Uh, and or uh, are working in the same type of institution, that can be a great place to do that. So those are during session eight. I'll highlight those. Um, and the other thing I wanted to mention that is offered, there is a session for the final um, uh, final presentation of our case study participant presentations. Uh, please do check out our case study. I'm putting the link uh, in the chat there. You can sign up for it. It is for ever, anyone who has basically less than 11 years. So it is entry and mid-level. Uh, we can have combined teams of entry and mid-level folks. It could be two mid-level, two entry level. The topic is very interesting this year. Um, I, what I can share is that it is about managing the impact of state legislation on our students. But I encourage you, if you're interested in that type of activity, to check that out. You can go to that um, link and you'll find a link to sign up, um, show your interest, and then our individual on the program committee who's uh, putting that together will get in touch with you about that. Um, the other thing that I would mention is that we are still looking for moderators for our program sessions. So if you're looking for an interesting to way to get involved on a really low level uh, with the conference and you just um, you want to get the chance to meet some of the folks who serve on the program committee, there's quite a few. Um, we we encourage you to sign up to moderate a session. Oftentimes, you're hopefully going to sessions anyway, so doing this can be um, a good way to connect with the committee and sort of start your volunteer work uh, with AKUHAWAII if you're not already involved, or just to continue if, you've, um, if you're already engaged. It, it really is a, um, a good way to kind of get to know uh, some of the presenters and some of, uh, and it's a very simple job. Uh, you show up in the room and do some introductions and provide a uh, information if they need technical support and do a count on the room for us. It's a, it's a fairly easy job, um, but it's a great way to get involved. So I encourage you as you put your program to uh, slate of programs together for the conference to figure out if you can moderate any and you can certainly sign up there. So uh, there is also some moderator training. That link will go up on the Akuhua YouTube site. It should go up, I would assume, later today. Uh, they did the training, but they recorded it. And so you can check that out at any time. And honestly, if you don't go through training, you show up at our program room when you're moderating, we'll give you the brief overview. It's like I said, it's a pretty easy job. So um, I think that are the, those are the main things I have to share. Um, I hope to see you all at the conference. And um, yeah, I will turn it over to our next speaker. 
And uh, if you lost me there for a minute to that Zoom blip, I'm glad I'm back. Uh, in the chat, I was trying to answer a question about when will programs be up. We'll be getting that up on the mobile app this week. I've also put a link in the chat for the full program slates uh, on our CoI website. So you can click that. That's actually an Excel document for your for Excel lovers out there. Uh, check it out. So without further ado, I'm going to pass it over to Allie. Hi folks, my name is Allie Gary. I use she, her pronouns, and I'm the local arrangements chair for this year. Um, I work at Oregon State University. Um, quickly, I just want to shout out Teresa and Ben, who are also on the local arrangements committee. They are here, and as folks have questions um, about things to do in the Portland area, if you put it in the chat, Ben and Teresa hopefully can help me out a little bit. Um, we're really excited for you all to be coming to Portland in just a short amount of time. I can't believe it's already June 12th. Um, and we just have a couple of things that we want to highlight. So first off, um, Teresa is one of the folks who worked very hard on the Keep Portland Weird document. It's broken down into places that you can eat, places you can drink, some nightlife, some places to shop local, um, some of the hip streets that are in Portland um, and some other fun things in the area. So there's going to be a link to this in the chat so folks can actually see it larger. Um, it's also been highlighted on the website where there's information about Campus Home Live. So please check it out, especially if you're going to be in the area before the conference actually starts. And then we also wanted to remind folks that we are doing the Fun Run Walk and Roll 5K. Um, Teresa is one of the folks that also assisted with this, so shout out to Teresa. Um, it's going to be a beautiful opportunity for folks to go across some bridges um, and really get to take in the scenery downtown in Portland. Um, so if you're interested, please don't hesitate to sign up. Um, we would love to see you there. Um, I'll be there bright and early in my wheelchair welcoming folks. Um, so don't have any obligation to run. You can walk, you can roll in a wheelchair. Um, we're just excited to have folks out to participate. Thanks, Allie. And thanks to the whole local arrangements committee for all they've done behind the scenes to help this really highlight Portland while we're there at the conference. Uh, fun, rock, fun run, walk and roll. You can still register for that or you can register on sites. Just bring some cozy clothing for that morning. Now I'm gonna pass it over to Megan Brecker. Hello everyone. Um, I'm Megan Brecker, she, her, and I am the membership director here at AKUAI. Um, and I'm gonna to talk to you about some of the kind of fun activities and events that are going on that you can get involved in. Uh, First of all, we have a really cool center uh, right in the middle of the um, convention center where you will find registration, the foundation, uh, membership engagement, and TPE. We're all going to be in, in one area. So you don't have to travel very far. You don't have to wear your walking shoes. We're all going to be uh, right there. In the engagement center is where you'll pick up those ribbons. I highly, highly encourage you to take a first time attendee ribbon because we have seen a lot of folks are able to connect that way. Um, either our senior members reach out and say, you know, so glad you're coming your first year. And also other first year members will, will network too. So I'm sorry, not members, first year <laughs> conference attendees. So I highly recommend that. And then there's some other ribbons if you're involved in one of our networks or, you know, anything like that come see me, we've got a whole ribbon wall for you. Uh, we also, backed by popular demand year to year to year to year, if you listen for a sound, that's the prize wheel, come get a prize. We have all kinds of prizes um, and I would love to see you there. Uh, we have everything from logo wear to books, a chance to win um, a course, all kinds of stuff. Uh, so come over there. We also have a, a sticker station over there where you can get uh, stickers to put on your badge. It's Pride Month. Woo! So we do have uh, some of that as well. Um, last year, if you if uh, you had heard of this, not sure, but we did have French Fry Frenzy, which was a big 
fun event this year on Wednesday morning because uh, Portland is known for donuts. We are doing go nuts for donuts. So that is uh, Wednesday morning in the engagement center. Come on over, have a donut, uh, chat a little. I wanted to mention Caesar the No Drama Llama. This, this is quite the llama. He does march in parades. Um, they call him, they call what he does llama activism, act, <laughs> activism. So he will, you know, support all kinds of, of different runs and walks and uh, things like that. He goes to elementary schools. Um, he gets hugged by children all the time. And he will do up to a thousand photos a day. This llama apparently, when the camera comes out, will turn and pose right at the camera. He loves people. So uh, he will be there after the opening session. Is that right, Spencer? It, I, keep, keep your eyes peeled. We'll, we'll see when, <laughs> I when our llama shows up. Yeah, and he should, he'll be there uh, out near where we're holding those uh, main sessions. So you will, you'll probably see him somehow. Uh, we are also having a scavenger hunt this year. Uh, we, last year was the inaugural one and it was very successful. So come to the engagement center and get instructions on that. We'll also be sending out instructions uh, in the uh, conference email. Uh, I believe, not to call out Desiree, but she's awesome. I believe she participated last year and won a prize. So um, come on over for that as well. And finally, our foundation does a silent auction that is incredible. So there are handmade items, there are electronics, all kinds of things. So you can stop by and bid. We are also doing it online. So there are some things that you can pick up and take home. And then there are some things that are online that, that can get shipped to you. Uh, so look at the look for the foundation page on the website. That will be up on the 26th. And I think that's pretty much it. Does anyone have any questions? And and my shameless plug for Megan is she has a raffle prize for folks who stayed at the end of the session today. So there you go. There's your incentive to hang in there for 10 more minutes. All right. Yep, uh, that is right. I'm all about the prizes and the people. <laughs> all right. All right, next up. Next up is Anasha. Hey, good afternoon or good morning, depending on where you are to everyone. I am Danaja Pendergrass Thomas, and I have the pleasure of currently serving as the director of the Placement Exchange, which though independent or autonomous, is co-managed by Co Hawaii and NASPA. So I'm a part of the Kuhawai team when it comes to Campus Home Live and we'll be on site in Portland and excited to spend time with everyone. I came to talk a little bit about tips for networking and making connections at the conference. Uh, despite how bubbly I can come across on Zoom, I am an introvert and I own it. And so professional spaces like conferences, getting close to a thousand people um, can feel a little exhausting as much as it can feel exciting. Um, and so especially for people who may be attending for the first time or attending and individuals from your institution are not coming with you, just wanted to offer some tips and strategies to help you put yourself out there and network just a little bit. Um, and the first one sounds basic, but we often don't think about it. It's okay to have a plan for how you wanna network. You may be going to conference hoping to just meet people who are in the same role as you. You may be looking for that next career opportunity. You may be looking for a mentor. Whatever it is you're hoping to gain, be intentional about that um, and use the schedule to think about sessions and opportunities that will put you in the spaces and places with individuals who can help you achieve whatever your networking goal is. Um, I love a good buddy system. It's nice to have someone who may know people who can uh, make an introduction for you, but be willing to do a breakaway. Sometimes um, hanging out with someone at a conference you find yourself kind of glued to them and you realize that you really haven't put yourself out there as much as you possibly could, um, or you've missed opportunities to do some things on your own. So if you feel comfortable having a buddy, do that, but don't resist uh, the opportunity to break away from your, your conference partner a little bit. Engage in some of the things that we're talking about in this session. Volunteering is always a great way to meet new people um, under the guise of a common goal. And so if you wanna moderate a session, 
right? Being in that space with folks who are doing that already gives you something to talk about with people. It introduces you to a group of people you may not know, and it gives you a context that kind of invites you to start a conversation without, without you thinking about how to strike it up on your own. Similarly, I love Megan. I'll be in the engagement center beside her, but it is a great place to come and meet people who are already in a, a fun and friendly and engaging mood. There will be things that will make you laugh, uh, will cause you to strike up conversation. And I can tell you as staff, we do a pretty good job of getting to know who's coming by the booth and we're good at making connections. Um, so if you come by the engagement space and strike up a conversation with us, don't be surprised if Megan is like, hey, somebody else was here 10 minutes ago. It's so-and-so. And if you swing back by, I would love to make sure that you meet them. Um, that's part of why staff is here. So feel free to use engagement space and staff as an opportunity to help you make those connections. Attend the socials. Regional associations will happen, affinity network socials will happen, the opening session will have a reception. A, it's free food, come for that. But it's also nice to um, meet people around shared social identities or professional identities. And so if you're at a national conference, it's gonna feel good for me to go to the CEHO reception and see people from North Carolina and Georgia and Virginia that I haven't seen in a while. Likewise, if I'm thinking about moving across the country, right, it may be beneficial to go to another regional reception, reception and meet some of those folks, ask questions. Um, people are a lot more inclined to talk about their role in their organization if they don't feel like you want something from them. So use it as an informational opportunity to just make connections before you start talking about, hey, I would love to, to get a job at such and such or find someone for a mentor. Um, uh, visit the exhibitors. Sorry for the repeat about having a buddy. It's their job to strike up conversation and be friendly, and it's so low risk. The likelihood of you seeing them again is very slim, unless it's next year. Um, and so you can ask about their product, their service, just kind of get yourself warmed up in terms of conversation, and they will reciprocate and strike up a conversation with you. Talk to presenters, give them a second to bring you that for their presentation. Um, but especially if you're looking for someone who is a content expert or in a position to potentially be a mentor, wait a little bit around after a session, um, take notes and, and say, hey, I, you made a very interesting point and I just wanted to appreciate you for sharing that. As someone who presents, I often put my information up and say, please feel free to reach out to me. Most presenters are not gonna say that if they don't mean it. So please take us up on that opportunity. Introduce yourself, get a card, or just say, I will definitely be reaching out to you next week. We would love to maintain those um, connections, and it may give you the opportunity to get to know someone with some interest. Introduce yourself in sessions. We come in and we sit down. We hold our coffee, our beverage, and we're like on our phone until the session starts. Say hello to the person beside you. Ask them what made them choose this session. Um, Usually introductions are the hardest part about striking up a conversation, but if you do it in the session, you already know they've got some interest in that topic. Um, so, so get to know the people around you if you have the opportunity. Let name tags be your friend. There's a lot of information on name tags. Um, say hello to someone by name if you're able to do that. People love buttons and badges. If you see a button or a badge um, that relates to something you have an interest in or a shared or common identity, use that as an opportunity to make an introduction and a connection and strike up a conversation. And then lastly, well not lastly, but very important, consider those unexpected connections. Someone may very well come up to you and you might be like, why are you talking to me? Don't make that face, just say hello. Good to meet you um, and give them the opportunity to do the same thing that you're tasking yourself with doing. You never know what commonality you might have with someone. Um, and then lastly, uh, relax and be present. Networking is important, but don't become so obsessed with meeting new people or finding that mentor or getting that next new job that you forget to enjoy the conference. And so be yourself. And just be open to the fact that the opportunities will appear, they'll present themselves, um, and just be genuine in your responses and the way that you introduce yourself to people. So not a lot of rocket science there, but just the encouragement to be a little intentional as you think about joining everyone important and consider that you will walk away with at least one or two new connections for your network. And I get to talk about networking because that is a huge part of what TPE does. Um, I no longer make the assumption that everyone knows what the placement exchange is. We do have a history of being known as the once a year um, 
job fair, recruitment fair opportunity for people to find their next job. We're expanding to really be a year round service to the profession to help people um, be successful at having career longevity. So I'll be in the engagement space beside Megan, um, talking to people about what we can offer you as practitioners. So that includes our brand new job board, the ability to upload your profile so you'll be able to check that out, um, opportunities to engage with us in the social, social media space. We do TPE Tip Tuesdays. Um, we do Career Connection Thursdays. And then to talk more about um, the learning opportunities that TPE does on site and at conferences. So just left NASA's mid-level administrator conference talking about race in the mid-level role. Um, so would love for you to stop by, say hello, let me know some things that are impacting your career advancement and your career longevity. So not what it means to serve students, but what you need as a practitioner so that we can be more intentional about doing that. I'm gonna have giveaways. You can't be beside Megan's table without giveaways. We'll have a little bit of trivia. Like I said, you'll have the opportunity to check out the job board, engage with our social media. And if you happen to be a hiring employer, if you post a job while you're at Campus Home Live, you'll get a 23% discount on that 30-day job post. So hope you will come see us. We're happy to answer any questions and talk to you more about how we can serve you as a practitioner. Thank you, Dinesha. All right. Speaking of engaging, connecting, get involved. So get involved in the conference. I'm going to pass these links over in the chat as well. So we've got three ways for you to get involved more that we want to highlight today briefly. One, sign up to volunteer at the conference. This might be at a registration engagement space. This might be as a greeter for one of the sessions. Take a look at those spots that are still left at that sign up. As, may, as Melissa alluded to earlier in our in our session, you can sign up to a moderator program session. And finally, let's say you're like, hey, I want to go and I want to go enjoy the conference, but I would like to connect more with the QOI as a whole. Uh, we do not, it does not need to be uh, a huge commitment right away. Find a way to get connected with us. It is not a big hurdle. It is easy. Uh, just sign up on that interest form and you will get connected to a network, a committee, whatever you are interested in. So those are three ways to get involved that I'd highlight for you all. And with that, I open it up for questions and comments. So you can feel free to put those in the chat. And Desiree, why don't you come off mute, say hello to the group, and talk a little bit about our exhibits and our red shirts. It's like you, I don't know if you read my mind, I clicked send and then you immediately <laughs> called my name. Um, I was actually asking permission to plug the red shirts committee. Um, Please do. Oh, wait, can you? I'm good. Oh, yeah, oh, okay. You're great. Um, it's a, I mean, it's a very rewarding committee to be on. And the only commitment is really while you're at the conference. Our role is just supporting and making our red shirt, I mean, our red shirts, our corporate partners feel comfortable and finding out what they need and, and even getting um, delegates to our corporate partners. But if you're interested, feel free to email me. Um, I'll post my, I'll ch drop my email in the chat, um, but we'd love to have you. And it's another way to meet people um, and to get engaged. That's it. Thank you, Desiree. Thank you. Other questions or comments for good of the group? All right, I am going to say thanks everyone. I'm gonna stop our recording and then we'll do a raffle prize. So thanks everyone for your attendance and for learning more about Campus Home Live.